know we're shit. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Daily Drift. Welcome back, Drifters. So when I went to weld my diff, you guys saw how I screwed it up and somehow the pinion doesn't move. I came up with a solution. I ended up buying a new ring and pinion. I finished welding the carrier, but now we're gonna go work on changing the ring and pinion on this thing. It's gonna be a pain in the ass, but I've never done it. There's not really any good write-ups about it. So we're just gonna YOLO this. This may be a little bro science, a little bit of just me kind of putting shit together and seeing what happens. So take it for what it is, but it's gonna work. It's gonna work. So let's get to it. So the first thing I did is I took this little piece out. You can see I had to like hit it with a screwdriver because it's kind of in the wrong spot. Pain in the ass to get out. And then I have to get a 30 mil impact socket. Problem is, it doesn't fit. So I'm gonna have to grind this socket back to where it'll fit properly. So I'm gonna do that. So another thing I don't think I remembered to mention to you guys is that there's been a lot of work that I've been doing on this car that I haven't been filming. Mainly just because honestly, I'm trying to get shit done and sometimes when you want to get shit done, filming makes it like 10 times longer. So I apologize if I don't show you every little detail of everything I've done, but I'll go over it later on in the video. So stick with me. First, I'm gonna grind this piece up. Looks like we finally got something on there that works. So I just had to ground it down quite a bit. You can see that it's, uh, it's a little bit thinner now, but it's gonna work. So yeah, I got this on Amazon, cheap part. I knew I was gonna mess it up. So anyway, let's get the impact and get this sucker off. All right, so there's the top half. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap that out just to basically make it fall out in here. Uh, so it'll fall out there and we should be able to get that pinion out. I think instead we're going to use one of these. So there's that piece. Now this is the pinion, so don't understand why it's not just popping out. Ah. Well, I just realized that in order to pull the pinion, you're supposed to use a bearing press. I don't really have one, but my family does, so I think I might take this up there and see if we can press it out up there. I tried the whole hammer wood trick, I tried the nut trick. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna take it up there. We'll try to get it pressed out and see if that does it, and then if it does, then we can work on putting the new one in. So, let's go do it. It's moving down. Is it? Yeah, it's going down. It's going there down. Go. It's probably gonna fall out, so watch your feet. It's fine, it's got a good jack in front of me. I'll try to. Okay. Got it. Okay, okay now you can. Do you need me to hold it? Go, boom. There it is. So we managed to pull the thing out. Uh, got this thing out, and it should be good to go. So we got the pinion out, it didn't take much. It was actually pretty easy when we used the bearing press, um, but it took me forever and now it's really late. And for those of you that don't know, I'm filming a like mini documentary about a weight loss transformation thing I'm doing. And it's gonna be like over a period of like 90 days. And uh, I hurt my back yesterday doing some workout stuff and um, been pretty bad like to the point of like where I've been having trouble breathing and it may or may not be a cracked rib I don't know but I'm not gonna let that stop me uh, the events coming up on Sunday we're just gonna continue continue this video in the morning um, but I have to stop for a while because it's just been it's been really painful tonight so I'm gonna continue this tomorrow and then we'll just kind of yeah so we'll see you welcome back so guys today I'm on my way to Harbor Freight. I know, cheap China tools, but I gotta go get a dial indicator because I don't have one and I need it for the diff. So, yeah, I'm gonna go there. It's my first time going to Harbor Freight. I've actually never bought anything there, so it should be fun. Well, we made it, so I'm gonna go in there, check this place out, and see what we find. So I managed to find a dial indicator and a magnetic base for pretty cheap. Not bad, not bad. It was 33 bucks. 
Okay, so the one problem I ran into is that they didn't have the gear marking compound. So I got the dial indicator, which honestly, if I had the time, I would have just ordered it on Amazon because it's literally the same price. I just, the event's tomorrow. So that's why I went there. So I'm going to go to AutoZone and go get some uh, gear marking compound. So let's do it. So guys, two things. One, AutoZone sucks. Two, let this be a lesson to you guys, and if you're doing this, just order this stuff on Amazon. It's way quicker than this, because I'm having to run around. Look, I had to go to the, all the way to the O'Reilly's Distribution Center to try to find one today, because I needed it today. Um, so yeah, and it's really cheap. It's only like four or five bucks, but it would be way simpler just to click it on Amazon, and it's here in a day. But also, I discovered that this place would make a very nice practice spot, if you know what I'm saying, so. Hmm, I'm gonna have to look into that. But anyway, I'm gonna go get this stuff and then we'll get back and get started on this stupid ass ring opinion. Hey, huge shout out to uh, O'Reilly's for hooking us up. This was the last tube they had. And luckily, it worked out pretty good. So I'm gonna get my ass headed home. I need to eat because I am hungry. And then we'll get started on this gear. So let's do it. Thank you, O'Reilly's. I do appreciate it. Y'all hooked us up today. So let's get home. All right, everybody. Welcome back to my happy place, AKA the garage. So I got this thing all torn down. Uh, we got the other pinion and everything out of here. So. so I just finished welding this thing up not too long ago. And this is our old pinion that we got pressed out yesterday. So we got a new one that's going on. So I gotta get these bolts off so we can get this ring out of here. We'll put the new ring on and then we'll work on installing the new pinion inside of here. But before we do that, I gotta change out this seal here because well, you can see it's a little wet and it was kind of leaking a bit, so I want to make sure I change this out while I'm here because when else am I going to do this? Plus, this is 280000 so we're going to take this out, we're going to clean everything out, and then we'll work on installing the actual pinion. So let's do it. All right, so there's the part number. Just in case if you need it, I'm going to put all this stuff down below. You guys know the drill. But uh, I'm going to work on getting this on, taking the old one off, and uh, then we'll work on the pinion. So let's do it. So take a look at this. This is why it's a terrible idea to weld the diff with the pinion side down. Cause take a look at all the slag they got in here. Well, check that. It's it's bad to do it with a flux core shitty MIG welder and not expect this shit to happen. You see all those little balls? That's all slag on the side where the pinion is. Like, that's almost impossible to get out. That's what was stopping the thing from spinning when it was inside there because all those little balls dropped all the way down in between all the bearings. It's a problem. I'm going to have to try to get it out and see if, if the bearings are okay. They should be, but we need to make sure that there's none of that crap in there because that's like, that could totally screw it up. We could install this and have it just completely fail. So I'm going to try to get all this shit out of here, clean it up real good. Then we'll put the new seal on. Now that is much, much better. Uh, it looks decent. I think it just... You know, got all the little balls out of there, both sides flipped it around a couple times so there's no more slag in there. So we should be good to install the pinion. So we're going to be putting a new crush sleeve on it because that's what you have to do when you replace these. Basically we're just going to hand tighten it, get it as close as we can and we're just going to keep checking the torque until we get the reading that we need. It's kind of a toss up because I'm using really shitty tools but we're just going to do what we can. So I'm just going to use one of these like axle seal nuts basically to drive this sucker on there. Should be good, it's about the right size, and we'll just tap it into place with a hammer. Using a little bit of oil just to be careful because, well, you know, I don't want to screw this up because I screw this seal up and we're screwed. We're a little bit deep, but I think it's okay. Feels good. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I just realized I installed that seal without putting the pinion bearing in. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. That was really, really stupid. Oh my god, I am an idiot. Fuck. So guys, this should just be called uh, Take a Drive With Me Across the City because that's literally all I've been doing today is driving all over the place. This is why things take forever because I'm an idiot and don't pay attention and my brain is really, really stupid. But anyway, I found the BMW dealership here in San Antonio that actually has one of these parts in stock. They, the guys there sounded really nice. They had it on site. Of course they're nice, you know, because they want $25 for the seal that I get on Amazon for 10 you know, but hey, I'm an idiot, so whatever. I'm on my way there. I'm gonna go pick up this seal, 
hopefully before they close, because they close in about an hour, and it's on the complete opposite side of town. So, wish me luck. And then uh, we can get back to actually putting this thing back together. Hopefully. As long as I don't screw anything else up today, which, high chance I will. But, yeah. So, anyway. These guys have no idea what they're in for. <laughs> Let me look at me. Do I look like I should be at a BMW dealership? I don't think so. Well, almost $30 later, but we got the seal, so that should be good. You should have seen the look on their faces. I wish that I could have shown it to you. But, oh my God, when they saw me walk in, it was like, they were like, what is this bum doing here? So, I don't know. It's just funny how people treat you different based on how you look. Anyway. We're gonna get headed home, and then hopefully we can get this thing together without breaking anything else. Please, let me get this thing together without anything else breaking, and today will be a great day. Let's get at it. All right, so I popped the other one out. Uh, it's pretty simple, just the same way I did the other one. Can't reuse it because it gets damaged when you remove it. So now I'm gonna remember to put this sucker in there and then after we pop this sucker in, then I'll install the seal and we should be okay. All right, so now all I'm doing is working on removing the ring from the uh, differential. The old one was kind of stuck on there and ultimately you'd want to use some sort of heat to get it loose and smacked away until eventually it broke loose. And then I took the new ring and I went to go fit it on there. It was having a little bit of trouble. Um, but then I got it lined up as good as I could, pressed it down far enough to where I could get some bolts in the other side of it, basically to pull it on. I also used red Loctite on all of the bolts just to make sure that it's not going to come out. Lastly, I reinstalled the speed sensor ring and it should be good to go. Okay, so first off, I know you're not supposed to bend these things because it weakens them and whatever, it's supposed to be pressed off, but again, I'm on a time crunch and I don't have time to mess around with this, so I just hammered them out of the way, slipped the ring off, worked real well, hammered it back in place. So now we'll work on getting the pinion on there. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that the ring was going to fit because it just it looked like the holes weren't lining up, but they do. So we're good, ring's good, uh, so the next thing is just getting the pinion in and then we'll go from there. Alright, so that's the crushed sleeve. Uh, basically the part number if you need it, I'm putting it in the description anyway, but this is the thing that we have to replace whenever we do this. You have to use a new one because this thing gets crushed as you install it, like for instance on here. So on this piece, this is the used one, you can see it's crushed versus this one's not yet crushed. Now that happens when we go to torque this on there, so once it's in, this basically sets our preload. You do it one time and that's it. If I screw it up, I'm screwed. Um, it's something you're not supposed to reuse. So we're gonna be very careful here. Now the setting we're looking for, I believe is around like 10 to 14 foot pounds of rotational torque. Um, basically, you gotta use one of these things. It's an old school style torque wrench. It uses the needle arm. Uh, it's really the only way you can do it. You can't do it with a clicker wrench. They're relatively cheap. I think the one I got there was like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, maybe more, I don't know. So anyway, so we're gonna pop this sucker in here we're gonna put the new sleeve on. So literally just boom, just like that. That's all there is to it. So you can see it's on there. Literally just boom, that's it. So we're gonna take this dangle donger and we're gonna shove it in this hee-haw until eventually it turns into uh, a Meemaw. So I don't know what I just said there, but yeah, that's pretty much what's happening. So now we're just gonna take this, stick it through here very carefully. It's gonna come out the top. But you're going to find it's going to get a little bit stuck on that pinion bearing, which is fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this on the other side and we're going to run it through here because this is how we're going to end up pulling it through. I'm going to take this, flip this over onto its nose. We're going to try to basically tap this sucker in using an aluminum drift. Brass is ideal, but this will work. I know this looks terrible, but it's working. Okay, so we can almost get the nut on there, which is what we need, because if we get the nut through, that's what we're gonna use to basically tighten this thing on there. So we're good. We don't have to worry about the crush sleeve because it's not yet applying any preload. Right now, we're just trying to get it through to where we can get to the nut, so. Boy, I can't wait to see the comments on this one. Oh, you're such an idiot. What do you think? And you freaking moron. 
Why do you do these stupid things? I don't know, because I'm an idiot. Okay, that's enough threads. I'm gonna try to just impact it to get it through a little bit. We're just going until this basically bites down. So we're gonna be very careful here because I only got one shot at this. So I'm gonna do it like this. So because there's still play, you don't have to worry about hitting the crush yet because it's still not even completely on there yet. Well, at least this one's turning. That's, that's at least something. Okay, so I'm doing the thing where you do this to basically check the torque. Um, and it's kind of a pain because it looks like on mine, it's like it gets, it gets kind of sticky in some places. And I don't know if it's, maybe it's been over torqued or maybe that's normal, but it feels like it's kind of stiff, which is kind of making me worry a little bit. But according to this, once it's spinning and we're reading the rotational force, it's sitting around like 10. But see how it does this like weird, it does this weird like spitter spatter thing. But just doing that, it's looking about 10 inch pounds right now. Look. And then like right there, it got stuck. I'm just afraid because if I get this wrong, then I'm in trouble. I gotta figure that out because if I crush this too far, there's no going back. So right now I feel like it's, it's in there. It feels solid, but that means nothing if it's not getting the right reading. So I need to go take a look. So this may be hard to see, but the breakaway torque is like really high. But once it gets moving, it's fine. Like it's within the range. See how it does that weird thing? It just keeps fucking binding. We may just YOLO this. I really don't know at this point. This is not looking good. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you guys this, but I just did this and I looked and it's sitting right around 16 area. According to the TIS, it's supposed to be around 10 or no, 12 inch pounds all the way up to like 23 inch pounds of rotational drag. Now, they don't talk about the breakaway torque. The breakaway torque on this thing is kind of dumb, but I think it's because there's no oil in there. I don't know. Take that for what it is. If you do this, just be careful. For me, I'm just gonna YOLO at this point. I see something close to what I need to, and we're gonna roll with it. But we'll know more when we put the carrier in and we check the backlash. If that's all out of whack, then we know it's screwed either way. But I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Just Say a prayer, F in the chat. I just popped that thing in there and just basically hammered those little corners in there. And uh, yeah, it should be good. So now we'll go and slap the carrier in there and see what we got. Okay, here we go. Ah. So this just kind of sets up in here. Ah. I don't like that. Almost forgot I gotta get the axle seals out of these things just because I just wanna do it since I'm here. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the shim and I'm gonna take this piece and work it through here. Basically, we're just gonna try to line it up as best we can. Now I'm starting to wonder if this is even the right side. So guys, it's just another one of those days where I failed again because this piece, there's just way too much backlash. It doesn't matter what I do. I've tried adjusting the shims. I need to look and see if maybe it's the wrong ring and pinion for this particular diff. It's supposed to be the right one. It's a 188 mil and supposedly that's what they sent me, but now I'm starting to question it. But needless to say, the BMW is not gonna be at the drift event tomorrow, but I think the uh, RX-7 just might. I only have to do a couple little things for the RX-7. Um, pretty much just put gas in it and I'm probably gonna have to get a trailer. Oh. I totally forgot to get my tires mounted, so hopefully there's a tire changer out there tomorrow. Whatever. It's just another one of those days, guys, so I'm going to get out of here. I need some food. I need to chill out. I am, like, beyond stressed out and just tired, so hope you all are having a better day than me. Just remember, keep it nice and easy. So stay tuned, Drifters, because in the next episode, we're going to be putting this differential back inside the BMW.